All right, friends. It's me, your father, here to help you. In the event that anybody ever approaches you at the mall and says, hey, you look like you have some undiagnosed mental health issues. You look like your parents were divorced and maybe your dad is kind of a jerk that doesn't pay attention to you. And your mom ruins every family event by having some sort of mental health breakdown. Can you tell me where should I start with metal? You look like the kind of person that would listen to heavy metal. I would like to listen to heavy metal. Where do I start? You don't want to be caught by surprise in that situation. Or perhaps, perhaps you are that person. Perhaps you looked in the mirror and you said, I look like I have undiagnosed mental health issues. I should probably start listening to heavy metal. Where do I start? Well, today I'm going to give you the answer to that question. Of course, the real answer to the question of where do I start with metal music? The answer is don't start. Not even once. Listening to heavy metal even once is guaranteed to ruin your life. The only thing worse than listening to heavy metal even once is doing one marijuana. Doing one marijuana or listening to one heavy metal, it's the beginning of the end, people. But if you don't want to listen to me and you want to go down the dark path of listening to metal, well, today I'm going to give you instructions on exactly how to do that with our heavy metal starter kit. Now, there is no way that I'm going to be able to mention every band or every genre because, you know, the, the thing about metal is that there's just such an absurd range of like subdivisions of sub 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 genres. I can't believe you called Gorguts brutal technical death metal. Everybody knows their technical brutal death metal. Well, if you're going to be that guy, I can't help you. I cannot mention every band. I cannot mention every subgenre. But today in this video, I will give you a good overview, I would say. If you are one of the people out there who, for some strange reason, wants to get into metal, I'm going to give you a good overview. And I'm going to do this in more or less chronological order. In the beginning, before there was Cannibal Corpse and before there was Pantera and all that, there was... um what they would call proto-metal. Bands like uh, Iron Butterfly and Blue Cheer, bands like that. But the actual origin of the term heavy metal is from this Steppenwolf song, Born to be Wild, which before there was real metal, there was this. This looks like a sarcastic joke, doesn't it? Like, can you believe this is actually real? For real, this is the actual origin of the term heavy metal coming up right here in this line. Heavy metal thunder. Heavy metal thunder. This kind of music just makes me think of like um, your like loser uncle who uh, got like his third DUI in a year. And so you see him riding like a girl's bike around town because his driver's license got suspended and he couldn't afford to like even buy his own bicycle. So he had to like borrow your little sister's bike for like a month. That's what I think of when I hear this kind of music. I don't know. I think a lot of this proto metal stuff, I wouldn't choose to listen to it. I think it's kind of corny, uh, but these are the origins of the genre. If, uh, if you want to get into it, it's out there. Steppenwolf, Iron Butterfly, Blue Cheer, Led Zeppelin, that kind of stuff. But without question, everybody knows the first actual metal band is Black Sabbath. Everybody agrees with this. And if you have never listened to Black Sabbath, well, you're not alone. I have never listened to an entire Black Sabbath album in my life. I've never owned a Black Sabbath album. I've never listened to an entire Black Sabbath album. But even I, an ignorant poser, I'll tell you what. I have listened to every 311 album from back to front. I've listened to the first four or five 311 albums probably like a thousand times. And yet I have never listened to a Black Sabbath album, which makes me a certified poser. And yet even me, an ignorant poser who loves 311, even I know that Black Sabbath was the first metal band. There's no question about that. Everyone knows that. People think I'm insane because I'm frowning all the time. Well, you know, we were still working on the lyrics at the time. When did this come out? Like 1969 or 71 or something like that. You know, back then frowning was, was, uh, <laughs> it was such an innocent time. They're like, Hey, Ozzy, what's wrong with you? Are you satanic? You frown a lot. 
Ozzy looks so young and fresh faced there. Now, uh, my personal opinion, I wouldn't choose to listen to Black Sabbath just because by the time I heard Black Sabbath, I had already heard stuff like the Circle Jerks and the Accused and Sepultura and stuff like that. So you can't really go backwards. You know, if you've heard Sepultura and the Circle Jerks, at least for me, you can't really go backwards and be like, oh yeah, Black Sabbath, this shit's awesome after hearing Sepultura. So I, I could never really get into it, but you know, obviously have to give them a ton of respect for definitely like inventing the genre. One of the first bands to, like tuned down. I think there's, you know, Tony Iommi tuned down to like C, you know, way back in like the seventies and shit. So all the respect for Black Sabbath in the world, I personally would not choose to listen to their music, but got to give them respect. Next up, we have uh, what is called the new wave of British heavy metal, or as I like to call it, the new wave of British heavy metal. I just, I feel so bad for the poor folks in the UK because uh, after Brexit, it just, it destroyed their economy. What was once a vibrant cultural hub, now they can't even afford the letter T. A bottle of water, British heavy metal. Their economy is in a shambles. They can't even afford the letter T anymore. So pour one out for uh, our friends over in Britain. And even though they could barely afford the letter T, they still continued to make heavy metal. The next development in heavy metal was uh, the new wave of British heavy metal, which was bands like Judas Priest, I guess Def Leppard would be another one of them. What are the other new wave of British heavy metal bands? I'm just going to Google this shit of British heavy metal. I want everybody to see what a fucking poser I am that I literally couldn't remember the new wave of British heavy metal bands off the top of my head. I had to Google this shit. That's how much of a poser I am. And that's why you should never, ever, ever take my opinion on metal seriously ever. Other bands in the new wave of British heavy metal would include Iron Maiden, Def Leppard, Saxon, Diamond Head, Venom, and Raven. I just, I never really got into the stuff again because I was already listening to like The Accused and Sepultura and that sort of thing. And I just couldn't really go back to this. Um, so Judas Priest, I would say, you know, pretty cool as far as this kind of thing goes. All this stuff feels like a sarcastic joke to me, you know? Even me hearing this in like 1990, I was like, how could anybody look at this and not laugh? They used to play this shit on MTV on Headbangers Ball all the time. And I was like, ugh, can he play the Napalm Death video? I don't want to hear Judas Priest play Napalm Death. It is a pretty catchy chorus, though. And I've said before, I would definitely be friends with Rob Halford. Uh, I can't say that I love Judas Priest. I do like the song Painkiller, and I like his side project Fight. Um, I can't say that I love Judas Priest, but shout out to Rob Halford. Seems like a lovely guy. I don't know about the rest of the people in the band. They're probably cool too. As far as I'm aware, Rob Halford is the one that brought the uh, leather and spikes thing into metal scene. Of course, it was because he got that from like the gay bondage scene. So shout out to Rob Halford for like smuggling gay bondage gear into the metal scene. Respect for that. <laughs> like, I legitimately think that's amazing and hilarious and great. And I bet he does too. I bet he thinks it's pretty funny that he got all these like uptight homophobic metal dudes to wear bondage gear. I bet he thinks that's funny too. Now I'd say the next kind of big development after the new wave of British heavy metal would be the hair metal era, which started, you know, in the early 80s in LA. Bands like Motley Crue, Poison, Wasp, all that kind of stuff. Guns N' Roses, although I know a lot of people get mad when I call Guns N' Roses a hair metal band, but that's just, that's just what it was. They were considered hair metal at the time. I know people now don't like to hear that, but it's the truth. If you were going to pick one hair metal band, I would say it would be Motley Crue. These songs are pretty damn good. Uh, they really hold up. Very catchy. This is my favorite Motley Crue song. So sleazy. What a banger. Tommy Lee, also an underrated drummer. And a giant cop. Mick Mars, like, riffs for days. Tommy Lee, just super groove. Vince Neil, terrible vocalist and not a great human. But, uh, you know, he's a good front man. Just remember, think about this. Imagine that there was a time when there were girls in metal videos. Can you believe that? Can you believe that there was a time when there were girls in metal videos? <laughs> Can you believe there was a time when guys in metal bands were more interested in um, touching girls than guitars? I know, it's hard to believe, 
Hard to believe, <laughs> but it's true. And uh, this shit's good. Motley Crue's a great band. They had a lot of great songs too. Um, I, I think a lot of this hair metal stuff actually is, is pretty good. You know, maybe give it another shot. Some great songwriting. It was fun. The guys in the band were total pieces of shit. <laughs> God, like imagine if fucking cell phones and shit were around back then because everybody in every one of these bands would be in fucking prison for all the like horrible, abusive, debaucherous things they did back then. <laughs> exactly. Tell me you didn't want to fuck the chicks in Poison when you saw that album cover. You definitely did. You definitely did. So the hair metal era, I would say kind of underrated. The next big development that I would suggest you pay attention to would be the thrash scene, the world of thrash metal. Thrash metal, you know, we all probably know the big four of thrash metal, right? Metallica, um, Slayer, Anthrax, and uh, uh, Megadeth. Um, Megadeth, terrible. Metallica, okay. Slayer, amazing and great. Anthrax, also amazing and great. And in my opinion, this is like when metal actually starts to get good. I mean, hair metal is cool, but it's not really metal. Like hair metal is basically just like, you know, it's like boy bands with like guitars, really. This is when like metal actually started to get good, in my opinion. Like basically like 1985 is like when things start to become listenable. There's really nothing I can think of before 1985 that I would say is worth listening to, in my personal opinion. You know, we can acknowledge the, you know, influence and the greatness and the blah, 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 but I wouldn't listen to it. Anything before 1985. This is when Eddie Trunk stopped listening to metal. Exactly. What I think is kind of sad, and the reason why I'm going to choose this Anthrax song is because Anthrax is the most underrated of the, the big thrash bands by far. The fact that people still talk about Megadeth so much is just like... What is wrong with you people? How how was it the year of our Lord 2023 and people still talk about fucking Megadeth? I do not get it. Like how who are these people? If you're under the age of like 45 and you care about Megadeth, I just I I do I do not understand how how could you be under the age of 45 and care about Megadeth? On the other hand, Anthrax, listen to this. Among the Living, this is their second album, I think, right? What a classic. I can listen to this all day, every day. Yeah, Anthrax was definitely more punk-influenced, that's for sure. Anthrax and Slayer were the most punk-influenced, I think. Listen to those chugs, man. Shit sounds so good. God, this album was so good. 10 out of 10 album. Here we go. So when it comes to thrash metal, I mean, I could do a whole fucking video about thrash. I have done a video about thrash, but I'm a big fan of thrash metal. But check it, Anthrax. Hey, on. Now, of course, the next development after that is death metal, which, you know, basically is just taking thrash metal and uh, making it heavier, you know, death metal basically just taking thrash metal and making it more extreme. I have a 30 year love affair with death metal. Ever since I first heard death metal in 1990 or 91, I got the grind crusher compilation on earache, which had like napalm death, morbid angel, terrorizer, repulsion, shit like that. Ever since I first heard that album, I have been uh, in love with death metal. Ever since then, I love death metal like Oprah loves bread. I could listen to death metal all day, every day. If I had to pick just one song, one album to represent death metal, it would be Hammer Smashed Face by Cannibal Corpse. 10 out of 10 song. So catchy. Yeah, I mean, Morbid Angel, also great. The thing about Cannibal Corpse and about this song in particular is it's so goddamn catchy. Like, listen to how fucking catchy this part is. This part here. So catchy. It's like so full of hooks. Sounds amazing. And those vocals. I remember the first time I heard this, I was reading the lyrics and he started singing and I didn't even know that he was singing because like the vocals were so low. And I was like, is the, what, when do the vocals start? And I was like, oh, that like low pitched, like <laughs> gurgling kind of noise. That's the guys, that's the vocals. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 
This is going to take a little bit of getting used to, but it was pretty awesome. So death metal, I mean, again, I have made several videos about death metal, a genre that is near and dear to my heart. But if you had to start somewhere, I would say Cannibal Corpse. Grindcore, probably roughly contemporaneous to death metal, also started in like the mid 80s. Grindcore is mostly terrible. Almost all Grindcore is absolute garbage. I would encourage you not to listen to Grindcore at all. It's bad. It is terrible. But the early earache bands were pretty good. And I would say the best Grindcore band of all time is Napalm Death. And there is no debate about this. Period. The end. They are the best Grindcore band. I would say they're probably basically the first Grindcore band. Certainly the first band to like make it popular at all. But I, I think like Scum is like the first actual grindcore record. And to this day, I don't think anybody has done it better than that. This is their best song in my opinion. You Suffer the Children. This is really catchy. Great song. I love this mix too. This production I think is perfect. At the time, this was considered overproduced by the way. This was considered too like, too fancy. People thought this was like, you know, not real grindcore because it was overproduced. The really defining part of grindcore is playing fast. So here's the fast part. The blast beat. Napalm Death, without a doubt, the band that popularized the blast beat. Love it. Great album. If you want to check out Grindcore, I would start with the Napalm Death discography. Just go through it. You don't, you don't need to listen to too much else. Insect Warfare is also good. Discordance Axis is kind of good, but you don't really need to listen to too much of it. Okay. The next big development I would suggest you check out is the alternative metal scene of the 90s. You know, bands like uh, Rollins Band, Living Color, Tool, but Gene's Addiction, in my opinion, the inventors of alternative metal. Great band. Still holds up. What a catchy song. It's interesting to me how much like I hear Jane's Addiction and Turnstile now. I don't know if they actually are into Jane's Addiction or not, but they sound a lot like Jane's Addiction to me. Perry Farrell in particular, he started uh, Lollapalooza back in 1991, I think was the first Lollapalooza, which I went to with my dad. You know, this whole era was really cool. This is when a lot more like punk and college rock kind of stuff kind of started coming into metal. So they took, you know, the crunchy kind of guitars and stuff from metal, but made it a little bit less kind of dumb. The thing about metal before this is that... Um, it was just kind of dumb. You know what I mean? Like the people were just kind of like trashy, kind of dipshit, like corny, pretentious kind of dummies. And then the alternative metal bands came along and made it a lot more like intelligent and kind of creative and stuff. And uh, Jane's Addiction, I think, were the band that really started it. Of course, there were tons more like all the, you know, all the Headbangers Ball um, and 120 Minutes kind of bands uh, after that really, you know, we're following in their footsteps. Faith No More, you would want to put in there as well, but definitely check out Jane's Addiction if you're into alternative metal, which I think you should be. Around the same time, we also had uh, the birth of progressive metal. I just started playing Final Fantasy 16. The thing that's happening in that world is that someone has unleashed this blight that spreads across the land and kills all life. Nothing can grow where the blight has spread. Progressive metal is that. Only instead of killing all the life, it makes you uh, condemned to a life of virginity. So I'm warning you, if you ever want to touch a boob in your life, stop this video right now. Do not press play. Do not listen to another second of this video if you do not want to remain a virgin for the rest of your life. This would be Pull Me Under by Dream Theater, which I actually think this song is pretty good. I actually think this is pretty good. I used to touch boobs until Dream Theater, now I touch orbs. Is there a person that exists that listens to this band and doesn't play an instrument? I can't imagine why you would listen to this if you don't play an instrument. But listen, if you really want to go down this road, don't say I didn't warn you. The next big development, uh, I would say you might want to check out. Again, bad, not good. Very bad. Again, if you've made it this far into the video, you've already made a mistake, okay? This is like, you know, when the vampire asks to be invited into the house and you say yes, like you're already kind of fucked. So you've let the vampire into the house 
by exposing yourself to this much metal. If you've made it this far, it's already too late for you. But the next development to check out would be black metal. Obviously, all the nerds in the comments, I'm sure, are going to say that, you know, black metal was like Venom and Bathory and, you know, Sarcophago and whatnot. But really, what everybody considers black metal, you know, is like the second wave Norwegian stuff like uh, Dark Throne, Mayhem, Dissection, Emperor, all that stuff. I don't know. I guess Mayhem is probably the most notable band. And if you've never listened to them, you're going to be asking yourself, why would I ever listen to this? You're going to say, "Was is this a joke? Why does it sound like this? It's on purpose. Don't ask me why. It's on purpose. Doesn't this sound like your first band when you were like 12? When you were 12 and like you got your Fender Squire and you're like, you know, Metal Zone pedal and you and your friends like tried to write a song that sounded like Rob Zombie, but it ended up sounding like this. It sounds like they're throwing their instruments down the stairs while a eunuch screeches. I mean, that's that's pretty much that's pretty accurate. Yeah, so this is bad. I'm not going to subject you to listening to any more of this. But listen, if for some reason this appeals to you, the first question you need to ask yourself is what's wrong with me? Second thing you need to do is uh, seek help. But listen, if you really want to listen to black metal, I can't stop you. Next up, we have Doom Metal. I feel guilty because Doom is really bad. And the song that I'm going to play you here is great. So don't think that everything in the genre sounds like this because it doesn't. This is Bewitched by Candlemass, which is basically a bunch of like death metal guys that were like, hey, how about instead of playing fast, we play really slow? How about that? But 99% of Doom is terrible. Candlemass is amazing and great. Don't be deceived. 10 out of 10 song and video. Munching on 7-Eleven nachos in the parking lot metal. What a song. I love this band and this song. But I'm warning you, if you listen to this band, then you're going to listen to more Doom bands. And then the next thing you know, you're going to be that burned out stoner uncle who still works at 7-Eleven in his 40s. Never touched a boob since that one time that the girl he worked with in like 1997 foolishly let him feel her up at a party and then instantly regretted it and ghosted him. So I would say turn back before it's too late. You don't want to listen to sleep or cayuse. Turn back before it's too late. You're allowed to listen to candle mass, but that's it. That's it. Next up, of course, we got to talk about power metal. The only genre that's maybe worse than doom is power metal. Just absolutely awful. Power metal is basically if you just took like Iron Maiden and turned up the cheese to like 11. Just everything is like fast double bass. Every riff sounds the same. Every video looks like a cutscene from a big box PC game from 2001. All of it is awful. Like there is no good power metal. Dragon Force is probably the best power metal band, but there's not a lot to work with here. Really, truly the worst genre of metal. Blind Guardian does not rip. I would never listen to this terrible music, but whatever Oblivion mod this is, I got to find it. Is this on Nexus mods? I got to check the compatibility. But yeah, don't listen to Power Metal. That's my advice. Next up, of course, New Metal. I'm not going to talk about New Metal because I've already talked about New Metal enough for fucking 10 lifetimes, right? Are you, Are you ready for the New Metal? I mean, what is there to say about new metal that I haven't said before? I've probably talked about new metal more than anybody else on the goddamn planet. I know you already listen to new metal. You already know everything about new metal. So listen to new metal if that's what you want to do with yourself. I don't recommend it because here's what's going to happen. You listen to one new metal song, everything's okay. But by like the second, third, or fourth song, your eyebrow is going to start itching. You're be like, did I get like a mosquito bite or what? And you're like, oh my, oh my God, an eyebrow piercing just appeared on my face. Ah, you can't get rid of it. An Adidas tracksuit is going to appear on your body. And no matter how hard you try to tear it off, it's like the Venom suit. It won't come off. So I'm just saying, be careful. And then, of course, we have Metalcore. Starting in, you know, the early to mid 2000s. I think Kill Switch Engage, I don't think. It is a fact that Kill Switch Engage is the best Metalcore band of all time. It's a fact. 
That's just an indisputable fact. And basically what happened is that a bunch of guys from the 90s hardcore scene, uh, like these guys were, you know, came from Overcast and some other bands. Same with like All the Remains, God Forbid, Lamb of God. A bunch of guys from the 90s metal, uh, the 90s hardcore scene rather said, hey, what if we started trying to play metal? But they're still hardcore guys. So it didn't really exactly sound like metal, but they did kind of, you know, their version of metal. Plus they put some like hardcore breakdowns in there and some melodic choruses. They said, hey, what if we played in flame songs, but we added some chugga chugga parts like Earth Crisis, that would be cool. And lo and behold, it was cool. And that was the beginning of Metalcore. And then over there in the Inland Empire, over there on the IE, the boys in Suicide Silence, along with other bands like uh, Winds of Plague and uh, Whitechapel, not from the IE, but close enough, whatever, invented Deathcore, which is basically, yeah, Riverside. Basically, Deathcore is, you know, um, guys that grew up on new metal trying to kind of play death metal, but since they'd already heard metalcore and hardcore and stuff, it didn't really sound like death metal. It was kind of its own new thing, and it was great. Suicide Silence, I've said it before, I will continue to say it. The best deathcore band of all time. They defined the genre. They were the biggest of this generation for a reason. They were great. The first few Suicide Silence albums, still untouchable. 10 out of 10s. The best hardcore screamo band of all time. Job for a Cowboy, also good, but nobody better than Suicide Silence. And of course, that trademark, Alex Lopez Snare. I remember what I said the first time I heard Suicide Silence. It's like Slipknot, but the best part is the whole song. Yes, yes. So you can go down the rabbit hole with Death Corps. You know, of course, modern bands like Lorna Shore, Slaughter to Prevail, all that stuff. But I think personally, the OG MySpace Death Corps bands, in my opinion, untouchable. And then really the last thing to happen to metal that pretty much ruined it, unfortunately, was Gent. Uh, now give a guy a guitar and an amp and they're going to turn the gain up all the way and they're going to go chug, 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 right? And they're going to go, Ooh, that sounds cool. It goes, jun, jun, jun. If you choke up a little bit and like really aggressively palm mute your guitar, then it goes, gent, gent, gent. And you go, Oh shit, that sounds cool. And then you decide to make a whole genre out of it. Well, then you've got Gent. And I know a lot of people say that Meshuggah are the creators of Gent. I disagree. I think the creators of Gent, uh, are, uh, four bands which is Periphery slash Bulb, Monuments, Fell Silent, and Tesseract. And then you could maybe say like Sixth and Chimp Spanner. Definitely influenced by Mashuga, but, but different. To me, Periphery, I think, does it better than anyone else. They've got the riffs, they've got the genty riffs, but they've got the clean vocals, got a little bit of a pop sensibility that Mashuga never did. Right? Like, this doesn't sound like Meshuggah. It's obviously Meshuggah influenced, but it doesn't sound if they're not like a Meshuggah clone. And uh, unfortunately, people like the sound of this so much that metal has not evolved since then. Um, everything since this has been basically just, I don't know. I hate to say it. Periphery, very good friends of mine. I love Periphery. Great band, great guys. But Gent ruined metal. It's a fact. Misha, more than anyone else, Misha killed metal. It's a fact because everything after this is just Misha riffs with shitty Linkin Park choruses. That's all we've been doing ever since then. Ever since this came out, game over. Metal has been ruined. It's been lifeless. Now, metal is just the domain of uh, virgins who look like they work at a Starbucks. They would rather jerk off to a picture of a guitar than a girl unfortunately it's sad i'm sorry misha i love you you're my friend but you ruined metal it's a fact and you know it you know it buddy it's your fault metal is dead you killed it and that does it for the ultimate metal starter kit you want a ball mate abby metal